Well, uh, hello everybody, and welcome to Robert's train set. So, um, if you watched my uh, Mid Essex uh, video from their exhibition, this one here, um, you'll see that I bought um, this uh, Devon Bell set, and I obviously do need to put uh, make the engine in this DCC. Well, I'm, as I'm doing it, I might as well make it sound. So. Um, I did a little bit of research and I found that the, the actual engine comes from 2005 and the set from 2006. And this engine water meat um, is unique to this set, so there probably aren't a load of them about. So um, these are pretty simple to take the body off, it's one screw at the uh, front and lift it up and it slides off the back. Um, and this is what we've got inside, as you can see. Um, there's no uh, flywheel or anything on it, you know, and a, a really strange connection to the tender, um, although it does seem to work. So this is the, um, the DCC kit that I bought from uh, Coastal DCC at the show, in fact. And you can see it's pretty small, there's a, um, a AA battery. And there's a load of wires coming up with the decoder. It's a it's a um, version five, um, and it's an eight pin, and it's got an eight pin harness with with the uh, what's the name on it, ready just to clip in, nice and easy. And you can see the uh, uh, the arrow for number uh, one, and not marked on the decoder itself, but obviously it's the the yellow orangey sort of colour. So the problem with this is, was trying to get all these wires. Now I didn't want to cut all the wires off I didn't need. And the only two I really needed off of this were these two for the speaker. Um, so, yeah. And here's the speaker. So, if you can see, I've just sort of tinned the connections there already. And I, uh, after tinning the, uh, the, these wires, I just collected it up. Not very neat, but it's there. So I was a bit worried. I didn't want to turn it around the other way because it might short on the chassis. Um, so I did it this way round. And then I tried to tidy up all the cables on top of everything. And what happened? <laughs> it wouldn't fit the body. So I turned the speaker around 90 degrees like this. Um, and then it still didn't really fit, so I assumed it was all the wires on top that were stopping it. So the ones that I didn't need, I just put down the side, using, using uh, in all cases, uh, black tack, which is really, really sticky, obviously. And uh, yeah, finally uh, got the body on. Now what I didn't like was these cables were just loose where it connects onto the uh, tender so I did put a bit of uh, black tack to hold them. So <clears throat> as you can see it, it ran okay. The only strange thing was that it wanted to run backwards. Um, so eventually, uh, not right now, but eventually I just changed, um, I just added one to CV29 which alters the uh, direction of travel. So that works. Well, as you can hear, the, the sound works quite well. It's flaming loud, definitely loud. And now I'm raising my voice, the sound from this actually comes from the actual engine, which is unusual these days, isn't it? So it's a lot better. So as always, this engine's got to go through the iTrain's uh, steam to get it to work. Um, but what I want to try and do is retain the way it sort of sounds when the throttle is released. You know, it doesn't always happen with mine when I do it. So we'll have to see how we go with that, won't we? So 
So I then tried the, uh, the Pullman carriages that came with it. Now unlike the Brighton Bell ones, these can be on the layout when I turn it on, it won't fuse it. Um, so scratch my head on that, so that's good. So I ran it round a bit, make sure they, uh, they all sort of connect. There's no flickering or anything, which is pretty good. Because um, I'm pretty sure there's no uh, uh, stay alive in these carriages from uh, 2006 or even late earlier possibly. Um, and yeah, I like, I like, I'm pleased to bought this. It's it's really really good, you know. I'm I'm really happy. Um, yes, it's about 260 quid worth, but you know, got a complete train, haven't I? So I just let it run a little bit faster, and it's all helping obviously to run in the uh, the loco a bit, which I did do uh, to run it in, and actually uh, doing the. Uh, measurements on um, eye trains it does really give it a workout so it's great fun <coughs> so um, before I um, put it through eye trains uh, I thought I'd just try a manual you know gentle starting off and uh, letting the throttle off and, and so be it and see if I could do the same after I put it through eye trains so just let it run for a little while for you and then we'll go about uh, eye trains I think Everybody, I just thought I'd show you this because um, I've been scratching my head and scratching my head and I still haven't sorted it. But in the picture, we've got the Devon Bell uh, West Country Class locomotive, and this is on the final stretch of getting it ready to work in eye trains. Um, so it's been through the mill to get all the speed things sorted out, which wasn't without problems when I fitted the uh, decoder in it, the Zemo decoder, it wanted to go backwards. So to correct this you add one to um, CV number 29, which I did and it worked. And then I did all this work on it and then I thought well um, it, it wasn't really working very well. Um, I'd lowered the CV numbers for the uh, maximum um, for the acceleration and the deacceleration um, and I maybe did them a bit too much although no more than I've done on others but what I did find is you can usually adjust the top speed of these and the, and the bottom speed um, but if I did this I would find that they um, you know they it didn't it wouldn't do it. It was a, it was weird. I don't know what's what's funny about Zemo decoders, but it didn't work. So I just left it as it was. So I, I did re um, redo it. You know, sort of get the factory settings back in and then start it again. Um, and I'm just going to show you this now. This is the last bit. This is where we put in a program to show where the engine is going to stop. And you've seen these around the layout. I've got two sort of funny little um, um, weird animals, really, aren't they? I think you've seen them before. And actually, sometimes these are actually hit <laughs> by the train, so I have to take them off. So there's one this side of the layout and one the other. And that's basically where the end of the, the block is and you want it to stop. Um, so well, I'm going to widen out the... Um, frame a bit 
Now the other thing I've managed to do is I have quietened this down. It's it's incredibly incredibly loud. So this has been quietened down just with the uh, one of the, the function. There's two function numbers to quieten it. So it did seem to work. So let's go a bit wider. There we are, and I'll show you this setting off. So I'm just going to set the program to work. That is after I put it on the. Right, and here we go. Right, just click the button now. And it should start off nice and slowly with the sound on, remember. There she goes. Quite a nice gentle start, which I'm quite pleased with. So she's now going to come around. We wanted to stop where that little animal is. And yes, she's a little bit away. She sometimes is a bit closer and other times she isn't. So the five second delay and she'll now start backwards again. So I'm drinking my tea at the same time as I'm talking to you, if you excuse me. So, to me that's acceptable. I'd rather have a behind rather than in front. Now then, this is where it all goes, well, really ape shit. Because... It's just sailed past the one on that side. And I don't understand why. I've, I've tried all the adjustments I can, um, and some you can just work backwards, and others work for both ways. So you just one, you can't get the other one. So let's see her come back to here. So there we are. I'll just widen out a little bit. I think you'll agree she got a bit closer that time. It's been sitting here for a little while while I made the tea. You can see the animal that side, the black thing sticking up. And she's supposed to stop by with her tender there. And obviously she doesn't, so. But let's just leave with it. So yeah, I'm I cannot I can't I spent hours and hours and hours trying to do this and I just cannot get her to work backwards. Um, so I'm gonna have to let her go at that which I'm not happy, none of my others are that bad. Um, and the only problem would be if I wanted to reverse her into an engine shed, you just go fly through through the back of it, but we'll see how we go. All right, everybody? So hopefully the next time you see this loco, it will have a train behind her, and we'll just do a little bit of running. Uh, well, hello, everybody. Um, <clears throat> so you've seen... Um, me installing the decoder <laughs> and the problem I had with getting this to stop where it's meant to um, and looking at her at the moment she's on a she's on a route um, and I would expect her to stop a bit closer to the signal uh, which she's not um, but she's been sitting up here for quite a long time because it's quite a while since I've run the trains up here and uh, this is um, this is actually a week after I left to go to Getz and it's a day of the red warnings in the weather and bearing in mind I live in one of the driest areas in the country we have had over 40 millimetres of rain since about 11 o'clock last night 
according to my weather station, uh, which is astronomical. We usually get half a, half a millimetre or not even that sometimes. So, um, we've got a stuck engine here for some reason. Why are you not working? I'll be back. Well, okay, yeah. I just um, stopped the programme, took the loco or the train off the track, put it back on again, set the go button, and it went. To see Did if you? the chuffs on the sound match up with the revolutions of the wheel, and I've been told that it's supposed to be four chuffs per revolution of the wheel. So I'm going to move the loco to my little sidings here and see how it goes. So I'll, I'll film it. And if it's out, I'll, I'll sort of try and explain what you have to do to put it right, which I don't think I'm going to be able to do, but there we are. Okay, so I'm going to get back to the railway now. Well, hello everybody. Um, I've had a few problems with this, um, or with her. Um, she was going round and, and would, would suddenly stop for no reason, and then when I tried to get her to go again, she wouldn't. So I thought it was a bit strange, so I had a look and what happened is one of the connecting rods had sort of bent in a bit and was actually hitting the, um, the, the, the bolt that holds one of the other connecting rods on and that was obviously stopping it. So I've done a little bit of uh, uh, levering and, and titty raising, shall we say, and I've now got a working all right. So you never know what's coming up next, do you? So I've got her sitting here in the uh, in the station, um, and it could be Paddington, or it's more likely with this locomotive Waterloo. And uh, this was a Devon Bell, wasn't it? But I've added my Brighton Bell middle carriages. So I've now got a six coach um, Pullman train, and I think we've made a new train. We've got the Devon Brighton Bell. So I <laughs> hope you like this. Um, not been without its problems, but we're all right. Uh, I did fuse it and then had to lift all the Brighton Bell carriages off uh, because it won't it won't uh, start again until you take them off and then put them on one at the top. So it, it's weird, isn't it? It's weird. So what I want to show is how slowly I can get this away manually, um, and also that when I take the throttle off, it's still got that you know, that noise that you get when the throttle is off. So uh, let's, uh, let's begin. I'll get some sound on. Oh, and by the way, I have got me, uh, me tea and I got the, uh, the owl because I needed the wisdom to sort this out. So let's get some sound on. And you'll be pleased to know that I have done a little sequence with the cube camera that I wasn't able to deploy at Getz. For a little bit of sideline and uh, a few of the noises that this loco um, taken away from the platform. I won't do it with this camera, but uh, I'll show you a bit of that as well. So let's uh, get a start, shall we? Now this is manual.
So I've done a, an instant route um, to try and get this engine into this siding here. And it seems to have stopped for the moment. So have a look. So as you can see, um, according to my trains, this engine, or rather this train, is in the siding. And if I just pan up, I think the reason it stopped here is because iTrains is allowing enough room for the carriages that should be on the train, which are actually over there. And as I was too lazy to change it to a solo engine, that's what's happened. Anyway, <laughs> there we are. So I just want to try the uh, the chuff rate on this and uh, having looked at this a couple of times I think it's not right so if anybody knows what it should be um, will you please uh, let me know in the comments if you can help but I'll show you after this clip uh, goes um, the information I've had with the um, sound decoder that was supplied by uh, the company uh, and it's their own um, actual sounds that they put on them um, and you know I like them um, but yeah so I'm not sure it, it's dead right As I said, these are the uh, sounds from the coach, which is um, DCC Sounds um, Group, so pretty good. So this is what you have to do to change them. Um, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Let me know what you think. Okay, everybody? So just to finish the video, I'm just showing you a little bit more of it running a bit slower. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, there's a few more to come that are in the pipeline. So I hope you enjoy it. Cheers, everybody. Cheers.